kids too. Hello everyone. I'm just trying to find a great um a great place to sit so you're not blinding anybody with the sunlight outside. And I don't have jewelry on yet. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll see. Um we'll wait for people to hop on. Hello, Southern Sense. Good evening, Southern Sense, I should say. Um <clears throat> because it is 1 p.m. Um, on Thursday here today. Hey, Fancy. Hello, Fancy. Yo, Yolanda. Oh, Fancy. I've been thinking about you. <laughs> I don't even know you. Hello, Haley. Um... <clears throat> Yes, so I thought it was going to be a little late, but turns out I'm okay. One of my friends and I, another Sensi director, and I are looking at planning a trip to Bali together. My hair's all, where is this? I just touched it. I think I can hide it. Nope, I'm going to have to spit on it. Hey, Patricia. Fellow Patricia. Evelita, Evelita, is it? Evelita. Evelita? Am I saying that right? Evelita? That's how it's, but I bet you I'm killing it. Evelita. Hmm. Where's your fearless leader? Hmm, 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 hmm. Thanks. It has faded a lot. This is six six or seven washings in so not bad though because we tried something new this time we did the purple roots and then the pink on top so um oh i got it right yay um hey cody awesome that would not happen here in new zealand i'll tell you right that i know stop talking about it patricia there she is there she is crazy leaders here um just to kind of give you guys an idea, because I would love to go to Reunion in America every year. And one day I will. Hmm. Um, but plane tickets, plane tickets to LAX are usually, like when we went to Anaheim, the reason why that worked because um, it um, it's about... Well, it was 1800 for for round trip tickets to California. As soon as you leave LAX, that kind of doubles. <laughs> I'm originally from Wisconsin and Illinois. I say I say Illinois is my home, but I was born and raised in Wisconsin. I was going to almost tell you where. And um that autom automatically makes it $3000. So, um Austin was $3000. And so that's just for flights. That's nothing else. So just to kind of put in perspective, like I wish I could just hop on a plane, but I, I'm, we're at the bottom of the earth. That's why it's down under. We're not Australia, we're New Zealand. So we're to the right of um, Australia. Uh, thanks, Haley. Um, I don't care if it bleeds. My hair's usually, I don't have a problem with bleeding. Um, yeah, see Patricia? So every time everybody goes, oh, are you coming to the reunion? And I'm like, do you have $3,000 for me? Um, so I actually had to borrow money to go to, um, to Anaheim from a friend. Um, she's like, I'll help you. And so we, we got to go together, you know? So, um, and it was an amazing experience, but, and that was cheaper. <laughs> so whenever they have things in California, we asked them a couple of times, if you're going to have stuff, have it in California so that we can all have a better chance of attending. Um, cause right now we're all trying to figure out how to get to Hawaii as leaders and those pricing, I mean, we're looking at like $5,000 or more for three days. <laughs> so, so we're all like, mm, mm. yeah, it's a constant. My eyes, I, I forced my eyes to put makeup on before I was completely awake today. Um, so anyway, I'm just waffling till everybody hops on. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Patty Wonder. I am originally hailed from the Midwest and I met a boy online in 2006 
and moved here to be with him. Um, he sadly passed away in December and um, thanks to Sensi, I'm okay. So um, I pay all my own bills. Um, we started making me pay the bills probably a year before he passed away um, to get me did I, was I okay? Was I making enough? Did I need to do more? Um, how could I not go to him for help just in case today was the day. So, um, so I'm really proud of everything that, um, I have accomplished and I'm really proud of my team and I am so honored to be, um, invited into this group. Um, thank you, Rachel. I know she is giddy spastic. Um, and I love her to pieces. Um, I started watching Rachel's videos. I can't remember what she was. I think it was just unboxing videos. And I absolutely fell in love with Rachel. Um, on the um, leadership calls, y'all need to become directors so that you can get on um, Jacqueline's leadership calls. Uh, again, great personality. So much fun. Um, hilarious. I love when people make me laugh. It's an automatic love if you make me laugh. So... Um, so thank you for having me. Um, I am a director. I do live in Waikuku Beach, New Zealand, which is about 40 minutes north of Christchurch, New Zealand. And um, I have been here for 13 years, 13 plus years, um, thanks to internet dating. <laughs> so, um, Oh, I love you too, darling. All right. So it was quite funny when Rachel asked me come, to come talk to you about FOWAT. <laughs> um, what is not my term, first of all. FOWAT is Amanda Gore's term. Um, for those of you that went to SFR, um, the amazing Australian Amanda Gore was one of your speakers. And um, we love her here. I know Americans don't know exactly how to take her. <laughs> I completely understand. I adore her. And it was so nice to have that word, what instead of going, because for me, I just kept going, who cares? Who cares what other people think? Just go do your stuff. And when she gave it a name, I was like, oh, thank you, Amanda Gore. So that's, that word's all Amanda Gore. Even if you go Google what on the computer, most of it has her thingy on it, a lot of it. Um, did you like her? Oh, that's so good, Patricia. I heard mixed things. She swears. Um, she's very all over the show, which makes it funnier for me. Um, but I think one thing that a lot of people don't realize is region three people. Um, Australia, New Zealand. Swearing is just part of the, the norm. Um, obviously, generational wise, there's some play in there. But for the most part, even if the women that are older don't swear, the men do. So it, swearing is just part of conversation. And so I am actually known as the swear bear for America, apparently, because people send me things word F fuck on it all the time and stuff. So, um, so for what stands for fear of what others think. I do believe um, that it is worse than prison and being locked up in prison. I believe having full watt is comp comparable, com comparable, comparable to prison or jail at least, maybe not prison, but jail. It prevents you from being free. It prevents you from being happy. It prevents you from your best life hashtag best life. It prevents you from great things happening. Somehow, um, somewhere, and I know for me, I was um, raised by my grandparents and every freaking sentence, I swear, that came out of their mouth whenever I did something, I should tell you about how I was, was, Ugh, what will people think? Oh, what will people think? Oh, what will the neighbors think? Oh, now you Americans are going to understand this. But I remember for one of the dances, one event we had at high school, um, 
my friends thought it was funny and they toilet papered my house. They don't do that over here, by the way. Um, so that's why I'm telling you the story because you'll understand. And my grandfather called me at four o'clock in the morning. I was staying at my friend Marcy's house. Still remember that. And um, said, you need to get home right now and clean up this mess before the neighbors wake up. <laughs> and I was like, who cares? What if it rains? Y'all know what that means. Um, and I'm like, oh. so I slowly got up, finally got home around seven. There was not one speck, one speck of toilet paper. He's German and Dutch. I was raised by my German and Dutch grandparents. It was all cleaned up. There wasn't a hint of toilet paper anywhere. I was like, wow. I can't get the answer to that on Apple Watch. There you go. Now my Apple Watch is tuning in. Every once in a while it does that. Um, who cares? Their kids, the neighbors, got toilet paper. They were younger because I used to babysit for them. They got toilet paper too. Like... Oh my gosh, this is not going to make your house look ugly. It's not going to make the neighbors think anything less of you. Freaking relax. Slow your roll, Opa. So, um, but that was just, that was a minute thing of all the things I heard growing up. Now, I don't know why it didn't take with me. It took to, it, it took to my soul probably until I understood life a little bit more and but my whole life it was well what will people think and oh you better wear makeup Americans for sure better have makeup on when you leave the house oh my gosh what would people think if you didn't have your freaking makeup on oh uh, what happens if you didn't wear the right clothes or in high school the name brand clothes I was in that generation where it had to be this and it had to be that and the label had to show because otherwise okay um we're kind of out of that now a little bit that I can see which is good I think we have a more thrifty younger generation now um which sometimes are clothes do look that way like they just pulled them out of the garbage but that's a whole nother topic um can tell I'm getting old but this is like drilled into us it's just drilled and drilled and drilled and drilled into us oh my gosh <laughs> one of the things my grandma always said was put your legs together <laughs> because I didn't like wearing dresses because people made a big deal out of it oh no you look so pretty oh shut up um as much as I like to look different, I don't like to stand out and have attention. Isn't that funny? It's a, it's a weird thing about me. Just leave me alone. Don't tell me about how cute I look in my dress. Um, and I would just stand like normal or I would sit normal and it would be like, oh, close your legs. Constantly. It was constant. Oh, make sure you smile better. Um, you look crabby. You know, resting bitch face wasn't a phrase that came around till way later. Um, it was always something. Always, always, always. Fast forward till about 1997, 98, maybe 99. And I was part of something. And I wanted them to like me. I'm just reading Rachel's. Yes. Um, good. Good, good, good. Um, I wanted people to like me. I wanted people to be proud of me instead of going, why can't you be more like the neighbors? Because that's what my grandpa always said. Or can't, why can't you be like the doctor's kids who, by the way, weren't great. He just didn't know that. Um, Parents give this facade about their kids and they, they all think that their kids are the best kids. But some of them are shitheads. Sorry, but stop making them out to be angels when they're not. Um, but then everybody else goes, oh, her kids are... But, and then they want you to compare and you see how they really act. And you're like, you really don't want me to act like that. Trust me, you're not seeing the full story. <laughs> um, but I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be included. I wanted to be invited everywhere. I wanted people to like me. I wanted to make friends. And what if, what if they didn't like me? 
what if I didn't earn this? Or what if I didn't go there? Or what if, what if, what if? And I did some bad things. Um, I did some, I was also at the time in a very abusive relationship. And I knew if I did certain things, I wouldn't get in trouble and I wouldn't get hit and I wouldn't, um, I would be invited to things. It is weird, but I look back and go, wow, you really didn't like yourself because caring what other people think about you is a form of self-loathing. It's a, it's a form of not liking yourself. It's a form of almost hating yourself that you would value other people's opinions more than your own. How did that happen? And how can you break it? And I last night, because I didn't want to really prepare, prepare for this, because this is something I could preach all day about. Um, and I really it's, it's become probably part of my branding is that I really want people to just own who they are um, and be OK with the fact that knowing that you're not everybody's cup of tea. People are going to not like you. People are going to talk bad about you. This is not your problem. That's their issue because people that talk bad about you have their own issues. Oh, she's got pink hair. Oh, you got brown hair. See ya. You know, like, who the hell are you to tell me? I like my hair. Thank you very much. Um, I don't want to look like you. So if people are, what I find out is if people are judging, if people are worrying about being judged, they're usually people that judge. I have a couple friends that say they don't judge people, but whenever I'm with them, they talk about how others look. <laughs> and I'm always like, so, mm hmm yeah. So in, when I see that, to me, it means that that's why she goes through all the trouble of shopping and buying this and buying that and buying this, but she never has any money, but she buys and buys and buys and buys and buys to try to give the facade of this, this, and this. She would be as smart, as beautiful, and as put together if she wore a t-shirt and jeans. But she wants to look and appear a certain way. And she judges others. But she says she doesn't judge. And I know she does. So I'm very attuned to it now. I also think that when you go through a lot of things in life, like I have personally, you can have nothing and you can have lots. And the ones that have had nothing and have had lots and have went through some crazy shit tend to not judge you as much because they understand. I live in a very, very tiny, tiny place now. Some people would come into it and go, oh my God, this is so tiny. It's, it's like tiny, tiny house. Um, and, but not officially one of those swanky ones, fancy ones, have to put that in there. Um, and I don't care. I love my little house. I lived in a big house before this. I never want to live in a big house again, unless I have servants and I have money like Oprah. I just don't want it. I just don't want it. Um, I love my little house. I call it the glorified dorm room. That's what it is. It's like my college dorm room. That, that That's how I feel about it. And um, I can pay my own bills. I don't have to stress. And I have plenty of money left over for the things that I need. And, um, and I work my business from my living room. Like I'm sitting in my living room right now. That's my couch. That's my TV. And I'm sitting at my desk, which is against the back wall of my house. Like it's very little. Um, and so I kind of wanted, I, I sat down last night and said, well, how can I make this even more sensey related? That is right, Patricia. That is right, Rachel. Um, and then there's, there's talking about people and then there's talking about people. I will tell people if I don't have something nice to say about that person, I, I really, mm -mm. and if you come to me bad mouthing another person, I'll be like, you know what? Take it elsewhere. I remember when I worked at Nordstrom's in Schaumburg and me and my bestie Vicky there, um, we didn't want to get on the gossip. We just didn't want to take part in it. And with that many people in the makeup bay, like you've seen the, the, the beauty bays 
at um, Nordstrom's, you know, the cosmetics section. They love that. And they would all come and huddle. And Vicky and I would be like, can you take that somewhere else? And then, of course, they started talking bad about us because we didn't want to take part. I'm still the same way. You know what? If you're going to talk crap about me, you need to go somewhere else because I don't want to listen to it. I don't want to talk about people uh, unless you're going, oh, my gosh, did you see what Rachel did today? Holy shit, that was an amazing idea. Or, holy crap, Rachel did this. You know, like, if it's good, sure, go ahead, talk about people. <laughs> but if it's to tear them down, pick them apart, or or criticize or judge, take it elsewhere. I don't really, hear, I don't care if you don't decide you don't like me after that and you go talk about me to other people, which has definitely happened. <laughs> definitely happened. Um, somebody once said, oh my God, you're so popular and sensey. And I said, mm. I said, popular and well-known are two different things. I am well-known. I might not be popular. <laughs> um, it's one of the things that I sometimes worry about moving back to America is because I'm blunt, but thank goodness I want to move to New York because they tend to be more blunt. Um, so here's some examples of where you might think you have faux what, or maybe you think you don't have faux what. Most people know they have faux what, but here's some examples of things that have either been part of mine, are still some of mine, or that I've heard other people say. Do you care what other people think when you're handing out a sample? What do you think about yourself when you're handing out a sample? Oh my God, I don't have makeup on today. I'm not going to give her a sample. Oh my God, um, this one looks crappy. I'm not going to give her a sample. Um, oh, she's busy. I'm not going to give her a sample. Oh, I don't want to tell her how to use this because there's a line of people if I give her this sample and I won't be able to talk to her. That's all faux what. It's all faux what. Every bit of it is caring what other people think. And you even caring about you like, oh, I'm going to not, I'm not going to do this today because I don't want people to see me because I don't have my hair and makeup done. I don't want, I'm not going to wear Scentsy t-shirt today because blah, blah, blah. I do that to hide because everybody wants to talk to me and there's days I just don't want to talk to people. Yay! Go, Rachel! Um, I, however, I do have my paparazzi days. And I call them paparazzi days because when I have the hair that I have, everybody wants to talk to you. <laughs> and as an introvert, some days I just want to go and do things without being talked to. Just sometimes. And so I'll take, I won't wear scentsy clothing, which is almost, I have to dig for non scentsy clothing. Um, and I take the little signage magnets off the side of my car. I'm like, no, not today. But you know what? Somehow it happens anyway. Um, and it will be because of my smile or because of whatever. It's just really funny. A guy did it to me the other day. He's like, you have a really nice smile. I'm like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, oh my God, are you hitting on me? Um, I still don't have the for sure answer on that. Okay, what about when you're discussing hosting or joining? Do you have thoughts that go through your head? That they may be thinking things about you or, oh, they wouldn't be interested or, oh, I don't know. I don't want to bother her. I don't want her to think I'm, I'm bugging her. I don't want her to think that I'm stalking her. I don't want her to think I'm annoying. I don't want her to think this. I don't want her to think that. Here's one that I learned recently. A lady ordered like $300 worth from me. And then I ended up having a personal special. And I was like, yeah, you do. And your lives are awesome, by the way. I love them. Um, I think if you had an itinerary just so that you can come back like I do, because I'm, otherwise I'm all over the freaking show, that will probably help you too. Um, see, now I'm lost. Oh, no, it's still lost. Okay, I'll come back to it because I'll, I'll think about it. Oh, the, the lady that placed the $300 order, then um, I was doing a personal special and it was something that she uses and she had just ordered washer whiffs tubs and I was like oh 
God. She just placed an order. I'm not going to ask her to do it again. That seems rude. And I'm like, just send the text, Patty. She'll be pissed if she finds out you didn't offer her that special. Sent the text. She ordered two more. She had just placed. So that was all I ever needed to change. Because sometimes we overthink everything and go, oh, should I? Shouldn't I? Yes, you should. Send it. You are strictly doing your job. You are letting them know about specials. You know, your favorite store doesn't see if, hey, you were in yesterday and you spent this so much. So I'm just going to remove your name today from our mailing email that goes out every freaking day. And because we don't want to bug you and pressure you into anything. You just bought something. It's okay. We won't tell you about the specials you might be interested in. That's what you're doing. That is what you're doing. Um, we have a place here called Briscoe's. They always have a sale. Every single day, there's always a sale, all the time. And um, and I said, does Briscoe's, does Briscoe's care if they've put freaking flyers in our letterbox every single day, or emails, or TV ads, or all the things, and go, oh, don't air it at that house because she just bought something. Yes, it's on a different scale. But if somebody went, look what I got today at Briscoe's for this much, don't, and you're like, I didn't see that. I would have bought that. Do they have any more? And then you start asking questions. So just deliver the message. If it comes from the right place and you're just doing your job, they will appreciate the contact and they'll just say, no, thanks. I'm good or whatever. <laughs> That's all right. I lose my brain every once in a while. Okay. We'll talk about lives too. Um, all right. This was something that used to bother me and now it doesn't. Do you have full what about talking to someone who is wealthy, at least wealthier than you, about joining or hosting? Do you feel less than if they are super rich? What I've learned here is the super rich are super rich because they don't buy anything. Um, it's the poor ones that are always the spenders. <laughs> That's what I've learned. That's why they're poor. Um, so... But do you feel less than because you're like, oh, they would never be interested in Sensi. They would never be interested in Sensi. Oh, see? Um, let me tell you something. This is what I learned. In the beginning when I started Sensi, I used the term, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Join Sensi. Guess what I got on my team? Do y'all believe in law of attraction? I got sick. I got tired and I got depressed. <laughs> I changed. I was like, far out. I'm attracting these people that have zero money and lots of excuses and oh my God and what the hell. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. They're hard work. I said, okay, changing it up. I attract people that have money. I attract people that are happy and positive and just want some fun things to do in their life and make some friends. I attract people that have disposable income, that have jobs. <laughs> because tell you what, this business is a lot of fun for them. And a lot of times it's hard for adults to make friends and positive friends that are loving and kind and maybe not as consumed with some of the things, but it gives them something for themselves, especially if like it's their husband that is the money maker and they're at home and, and, or they volunteer in lots of places. What if they could just join Sensi to make money for their favorite charity? What if that was why they joined? You don't know. And it's selfish of you to assume and put your limitations onto them and answer for them. But that's a big Fawadi one. That is right. We are people. I wish we were dogs too, but we are just people right now. Gotcha. Oh, it's become a friendship business for me. That was not my intent. <laughs> I'm the non-peopler. I'm the introvert. I'm like, oh, no more people. Oh, now my life is constant people. Um, so yeah. So think about them, not about you. Faux is when you're always in your own brain. 
and not thinking about them. That's another thing. If you are saying, well, what if, or, or she might, you are now thinking about you. You're not thinking about them. You're not thinking about how to make them smile. That's my big thing. Hand a sample and make somebody smile. Every day, your job is to make somebody smile. At least one. Let's aim for three. So how can you do that? Stop thinking about yourself, first of all. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, they're thinking of themselves. Because I bet you, as rich as they are, because we all know these people. Earl used to say, Earl is my partner, that my man that passed away. We say partner here if you're not married. But in partner in America means something else. Um, he used to say, why are all the pretty ones the ones that don't like themselves? He's pretty right. He's pretty right. I look back at everybody, including myself. And it's sad. It's really sad. But some of the people that have the most money and are the most gorgeous, they need love. They need joy. They need belief in themselves because this just came up with um, somebody very close to me. And I said, is the only compliment you ever get that you're pretty? And she goes, yeah. And she's gorgeous, but she has the most amazing mind and nobody gives her the chance to show it. So instead of thinking about the facade that you see that they're also insecure about, how about you see them? Take yourself out of it and see them. When you take yourself out of it, the faux what kind of goes away. It just kind of does. When you smile at somebody and you just make somebody smile, you may have just made their day. How about that? Um, here we go. Going live, whether with or without makeup. I did a 30-day challenge um, probably over a year, year ago, two years ago, a year and a half ago, something like that in some social media group that I was trying to learn how to do social media better. And I used to have a huge fear of going live. Oh, my hair's not right. Oh, this isn't right. Oh, that's not right. Oh, um, you don't, if you don't wear makeup, you don't wear makeup. Who gives a shit? Just be you. Most of your friends on your friends list, <laughs> I know in Sensi this is hard. Most of the friends on your friends list are your friends. They know you. Would you have a heart attack? Here's the key. Would you have a heart attack if they came to your house and you didn't have makeup on and you were just talking to them? Some of you would. I know I need an hour. I don't need makeup on, but I need everything. I've been raised to make sure everything has a place. So give me an hour before you come over. Don't just show up. Um, going live is so, so good for you. And it's so, so good for your business. It is worth the fear. It is worth the terror. <laughs> it is worth, the other thing is, when you look perfect to people all the time, when you look perfect to people all the time, it makes them think they have to be a certain way as well. I remember, I would go, cause, my hours are always nighttime hours. I very rarely do day things. And um, I was like, oh, I'm not. It's my day off. I'm not putting makeup on just to freaking do a live video on my personal page. They can freaking deal with it. And I remember being terrified at being judged. Fear of what others think. And going on it, nobody cared. They cared about what I had to say. Because I was talking about full on. Um, they cared about me talking to them. They, we had a, that's the good thing about being live is if you do it when you know your friends are kind of sitting around talking there, it's a conversation, social media, social. So it's funny that people care what other people think, but then you post some really nasty, horrible, bitching, moaning, complaining things and don't seem to care what people think of you then. So why would you care if you posted happy things and fun things? just because your face was on it. Put your face on everything. It's part of your branding. Just push the button. Every day, go around and say, 
even if you just go on your business page or you go on your personal page and say, I'm going to, go, I'm going to, I'm practicing my live videos and I'm just going to tell you one about one Scentsy product a day. Let me know if you have questions. Today I'm talking to you about Scentsy pods and how to use them. Do that and be done. And then breathe, right? Um, the other thing is open your YouTube channel if you don't have one and put that video on YouTube now. Let me just say out of experience, do it now. Because <laughs> someone's gonna ask you, hi, I ordered this off your website, how do you use it? You give them the, yes, you should talk to them, but you can give them the link and go here, here's a video for you to watch. And they can get your personality and they can see who you are and they can see that you don't always have your hair and makeup like um, an anime character, but you might have a baseball hat on and no makeup, you know? So little things, even if you do, I tell my team, you know, it takes like 30 seconds of courage to just push the button. Just push the button. Um, when you're out and about somewhere and you're somewhere new, push the button. Don't make it all about the scenery though. Put something of value in there too for them. Did you know that this tree, blah, blah, blah. Um, honestly, the more real you are, the more people connect with you, the more they have rapport with you, the more they want to join your team and the more they want to do business with you and the more they want to support you because they feel you. They don't just see you typing. Okay. Even if it's five minutes, five minutes at a time. Now I will say with live videos after about, oh, that face, when I did my face roller one, if you guys have seen this me doing this in my videos that one Friday night I did this I bought this at the two dollar shop because we don't have dollar shops and I said oh, I'm gonna do a live about this because this will be funny and it was um and I had so many people coming on I had nothing to do with Sensi, but they certainly got a gist of my personality didn't they um yeah <laughs> so Don't take yourself so seriously, truly. People will like you better if you stop being so damn perfect all the time or like that you think you have to be perfect. Um, uh, have you had full what about joining Sensi and telling people? Some people have that. Oh, I'm a doctor, or I'm a nurse, or I'm a dental hygienist, or I'm a teacher. Oh, people, people, people will think that I don't make enough money. People will think that, why did she do that? Um, she has money. Oh, she has a job. Why would she do that? So is that a fear that people have had? Think about all this, right? Um, <laughs> do you have full what over thinking about what your sponsor's thinking of you because you didn't do as much as you said to her that you were going to do. So you avoid their phone calls, you avoid their texts, you kind of go like mm, on the down low um, with your sponsor because you're embarrassed because you think she's thinking, oh, she didn't do her thing. She told me that she was going to get one recruit and she was going to have 500 PRV by the end of this month and she hasn't done anything. Do you think that? It was a dick. Oh, my fuck cards. <laughs> yes, that was a gift from an Australian director. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, but yeah, I've just learned to go live and not care. I know I have good things to say. I know that when I do product videos, my sales go up, whether they're perfect or not. Uh, good, 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 fancy, good. Because as sponsors, that's not what we're thinking. Sometimes we feel like parents, like, oh, we feel... <laughs> sadly more disappointed than angry we're like oh, come on I know you can do this I know I know just get out of your head I know you can do this that's how I feel all the time when people aren't doing what I know you know in school when they say has great potential um that that's how I feel like oh, 
could you please just believe in yourself for like a half an hour? Could you just believe in yourself? Give me a break for a half hour. Could you just believe in yourself? Oh, this is exhausting. I don't know how people do it with 6,000 people on their team. Um, God. So please don't avoid your sponsor. But please don't be dishing out excuses either. Oh, well, I had a very busy month and the kids were sick and the kids were off of school. And, oh, we had to visit so-and-so's mom at the nursing home. And shit happens to people every day. All day long, all the time, shit happens. All the time. Shit that would make your head spin and crumble to your knees from sadness. But guess what? Shit also gets done. Everybody has stuff. And my team kind of knows I don't want the excuses, but I want you to take accountability. Look, I dropped the ball. I didn't do this. I was more, you know, this took priority and I need to do better or whatever they need to say to me, you know. Um, But, and not everybody is me. Also know that, you know. Realize that not everybody is you. That's been hard for me. I know Jacqueline always says, I hope one day you have one of you on your team. Um, Because Earl passed away on the 22nd of December. I think I had two parties that week. So I did the parties. His funeral was on the 4th of um, January. Went to the funeral and had a party that day. (laughs) Um, Because shit still has to get done. Just because somebody dies doesn't mean my life stops. I'm not going to die with them. And let me tell you what, I will forever be grateful for that party because for three hours I got to escape from all that. And that, her name's Stacy. She will always be a special, extra special to me. And I remember her going, do you want to cancel? And I said, no. My cat still needs to eat. I still need to eat. I still need to pay the bills. And truly, if you are doing this business correctly, your appointments aren't about you. They're about them. And Earl would have been pissed if I would have canceled that. I know that. I am positive of that. So, um, but I don't cancel my appointments. I think I've canceled one because I was so sick. I just couldn't, I just could like, so, so sick. I've been to lots that are, that when I was sick, but, um, oh, I didn't say that to say, think that I was amazing. I said that because you have, as much as you have the faux in your head, you also have the control in your brain to shut it off and to do what needs to be done. I'm really good at compartmentalizing. I've gotten really good as I got older. I'm 47. So I started loving myself when I was, a friend started teaching me how to love myself when I was about 32, 33, maybe 32, something like that in that area. And then when I moved here, I wanted people to like me and I wanted to fit in and I wanted this and I wanted that again. And I ended up crying all the time. And I went to a therapist and she's like, you, first of all, you're trying to be an extrovert 70 hours a week at a job and then come home and there's still somebody in your space. I'm like, yes, because I'm somebody that needs alone time at least one or two days a week. I need to be alone. And, um, and I'm an extroverted introvert when I'm out of the house. So when I'm on, I'm on. And then as soon as I don't have to be on anymore, I come home and I just stay in my cave. Um, because I have that, it needs to be that way. Or I would look like Eeyore walking around all the time, bringing people down. And we don't want that. Um, hmm. So, um, are you wearing scentsy clothing? Do you wear, I know Americans are way better at this. <laughs> um, are you wearing scentsy clothing? Do you not wear it because you think your friends will judge you because you don't look nice and you're always wearing scentsy clothing? I always think if you're, this is just my thing. And I think Earl always said this. He goes, babe, you can wear sweatpants and you still always look good. Cause even if you just do your hair and makeup, <laughs> I just laugh when I said that. Like, um, I think if you're, 
it doesn't matter what you wear. If you if you have confidence and you're wearing it well and you look happy and you're smiling, you're good. Um, do you brand your car? I have a couple friends that will not brand their car. Because one, they don't want people to think something weird about them. And two, um, <laughs> they're afraid of people taking down their phone number. <laughs> I'm like, you know what, whatever. Um, yesterday I got a message um, in my mailbox on e on Facebook and said, do you have, are you still doing Sensi? I walked past your car the other day um, and I was like a catalog and she lives right up the road. I'm like, yeah, I live and breathe Sensi, thanks. Um, so I dropped off a catalog yesterday and she placed an order. Um, but just... <laughs> Just put it out there. Wherever you can, tell people that's what you do. That's what you do. Right. Exactly, Patricia. I don't... And the people, like, for us um, in New Zealand, most of the Scentsy clothes in the family store are pretty pricey. I would say sometimes our t-shirts can be 45 but usually they're about 60 70 sweatshirts are like 120 things like that and everybody's just like i'm not paying that and i went are you kidding first of all it's a tax deduction if it says sensi on it second of all how many dresses and shoes and jewelry have you bought that you've worn once that costs more than that and doesn't make you money unless you're that kind of dresser anyway I digress. Um, but honestly, I live in my Scentsy clothes. Even if I paid a hundred dollars for a t-shirt, it will get its use. It will make me money. It, it is fine. Um, and I didn't have to do anything for it. Um, branding your emails, follow up, etc. Do you not, do you have FOWAT when you're about to do emails? Or you you have full watts, so you don't do enough emails, don't do enough follow-ups, don't do enough texting, don't do enough messaging, don't ask enough people that my cat has now made its appearance because she always has to when I'm live. Um, you know, like what? Um, new recruits. This is for new new people to Sensi. Do you fear what other people think? when you try to recruit because you think you don't know enough. They're going to think I don't know enough if I don't have all the answers. They're going to think this, oh, they would rather join under her because she's been in longer instead of me because I'm new. That's usually not true. People join you. And the big saying in Sensi is people do things with who they know, like, and trust. When somebody joins you, and your team, it's because they like you. They want to spend time with you, which is weird because my customers see me more than my team. Um, they want to, they trust you. You'll work it out. I had my first team member within like six hours of joining. I hadn't even seen Sensi, hadn't smelt Sensi, hadn't touched Sensi. I didn't know what the hell it was. I joined the second I could while it, when it came here in New Zealand. And I never... My mate, my name, I threw it up on Facebook. Here you go. Didn't really care. Part of me went, Oh, they're gonna be like, Oh, now what's Patty doing? Because I've done it all. Um, but I didn't care. I was like, Oh, yeah, this is what I'm doing. It's not my job to feel for them, it's my job to put the information out. What they do with that information, not my problem. Um, I don't get emotionally connected to what they might think or how they're gonna answer or their emotional response to it. If they unfriend me, great, they're not my people. If they don't like me, great. If they block me, great. Don't care. Don't care. I have shit to do and things to accomplish. Don't care. Um, so do I care about those people? Of course I care about those people. But do I care about their opinion? No. Nope. Don't. They're not doing me. They're not me. They don't know my life. They don't live with me. They don't pay my bills. They don't get it. Um, so don't be afraid just say, hey, I'm new, I'm so excited, let's do this together, and we'll find out answers together, okay, great. And that's what we did, we jumped, we jumped on a call that day, because Jacqueline and Allison had their, at that point, like a 
a call-in thing. We hopped on there. We did a booking blitz. I had no idea about anything. And Jacqueline said, write this. Okay, text everybody you can in 20 minutes. And I texted and I started because they really grabbed that wickless candle thing back then. And I had wickless candle and home fragrance in my text message. And I had so many people come back. No, we don't do candles. No, we don't do candles. And I was like, oh my God, I need to change this wording because they're not getting it. And so I just said home fragrance at that point. And then I got eight bookings. And those eight bookings took me through the next two years. Like the chain effect, you know, the champagne glass effect. So I didn't care what they thought. I just put it out there. I just put, okay, let's just go through my phone and just send it to everybody. Send it to everybody. Stop analyzing. Just send it to everybody. Uh, a booking blitz is a time that you set aside, whether it's, um, you could do 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Some people, like for us, we have team, I have team members in three countries, so I might do a 24-hour booking blitz where you contact as many people as you can and talk to them about booking or joining basically and get those and it's like a focused intentional concentrated time it's way more fun if you do it with a couple people and you cheer each other on i've done it with my team in one setting where um everybody's afraid to do it and then once they start rolling nobody wants to stop because now they they're in that they're in that room they got the momentum going and people are like, got one, got one. And it's like a popcorn popper with bookings kind of. And so it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's more fun together. It really is more fun. I do them all the time for myself because I don't need someone else to motivate me. But um, but it is more fun. Like I'll, I do something called virtual cubicle where um, me and a friend, another director or something, we'll uh, zoom together. I don't record it or anything, but I just open a zoom room and we work at our desk during the day because it holds us accountable because we are self-employed and it makes us work, but we might do a booking blitz together or a, a recruiting blitz together or something together so that we have that support. Cause when you work alone from home, you're just, you, you sometimes can get really out of touch of peopling too. So, and sometimes you do need that little extra, Hey, we do dance parties as well on Zoom rooms and things like that because you just need to make things fun again. Um, yeah, yes, Rachel, you and I are having a cubicle because we need to teach you some computer things. Um, but um, don't forget to have fun with this. I don't care if you have to stand on the road looking like a chicken and say, don't be chicken, join my team and handing out samples. I don't care. Who cares what people think? You're going to get noticed. Sadly, you know, that whole um, even bad publicity is publicity. It's kind of the same thing. You're going to be noticed. You're going to be remembered. And people remember me. This was not the point of my pink hair. I had pink hair way before Sensi. But now it's part of my branding. And now I think I'm stuck with it forever. So, see, I can and I can go. Do that too. Um, comparison. Are you comparing yourself to other people? Um, my first team member that joined within that six hours, we, I, how do I put this? We joined basically the same day. I became a director in seven months. She was 50 PRV, I think, away from becoming certified. Um, and she didn't do anything. She left. And I know it's because she was comparing herself to me. She was going, well, she's that far. Why am I not that far? Oh, maybe I'm not meant to do this. Oh, I'm probably not that good at this. She's better at this. And my friends would have thought, oh, didn't you start the same time? Didn't you start the same time? Didn't you start the same time? How come you're not doing that? I know that was going through her head. I know it. Please don't compare yourself to other people. Please, 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 please don't compare yourself. To Everybody's journey is different. 
everybody has their own bad things going on up here that are limiting them, including Fowat. Sensi is a very much a personal growth. When you personally grow, your business grows. If your business isn't growing, but you think you're doing all the things to make it grow, and you think you totally think you are, usually the answer is within you. It's not in Sensi. It's something you need to address in you. Is it the energy you're giving off? And is that energy that you're giving off that way because of shit you haven't unpacked in your brain and in your soul. You have to do that. There's freedom in that. There is freedom in that. I used to compare myself a little bit to, um, I was the second director in New Zealand, but the first, the second, the third, no, the first, the third, the fourth, and the fifth all became star directors the next year. I didn't. And I was like, oh man. <laughs> I am so glad I didn't. I found things out and I am so glad I didn't. I'm still a director. I have a strong team. I have a great team. They're amazing. Team Wonderbar, shout out. And... Just trust the process. Just trust the pro it is. I've been a director for four years now. And yeah, I'd love to be a star director, but I don't want to be a star director and then have my directors not be able to be great directors with a great foundation, which keeps me at a star director foundation. So my goal for them, and I've talked to them about that. I've talked to them about that, like, Yes, you want to be directors. And yes, I would love to see you make it happen. Absolutely. For tons of different reasons. Not just me, but for them too. And, but build. Build, build, build. It will happen if you keep going. It really will. Um, oh, good, Yolanda. Um, so don't compare yourself. You know, a lot of those people don't get, ever get paid at star director again. And so with our past incentives and stuff, they haven't gotten those points for paid at title. This one's a bit different. Now we can do that. So, um, yeah, so just, just do the work. Just do the work. Don't worry. Put your horse blinders on. Focus on making people smile. Focus on making your team feel like they exist and they matter to you and just share Sensi. The rest happens. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Um, oh, here's another one, faux what? This is a big one, especially for women, especially for women. Saying yes to shit you don't wanna do. I'm gonna be in New York and Bermuda, by the way. People keep saying I'm going to Amsterdam or going to the Netherlands, but. I love that they're, they believe in me, but I'm saying New York and Bermuda. Um, uh, saying yes to crap you don't want to do. Stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Now, there are certain people this tends to happen to more because they can't say no and they're, they just want to make people happy. And oh, that was so nice that they asked and blah, 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 blah. No, I'm sorry. I can't do that for you. Or no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry. But thank you for asking. Maybe so-and-so could help you. If they have a freaking bee in their bonnet, as they say over here, let them. Because you being a doormat for them is not okay. And them already coming to you knowing that you won't say no because most of the you yes people you always say yes so you i'll just ask her she'll say yes um if you've ever done the disc the disc personality like training um you can learn about it on google disc disc program um it tells you about different personality types and i've always studied them 
I've been in sales a long time and I am a high D personality, which means I am direct. I like to get things done. I care about going to the top. Um, but my S, which is your stability and your security <laughs> and your family kind of corner, I have almost zero in mine. When you look at my numbers, I'm a high D, no, no S, no S. <laughs> if people came to me and said, oh, you know, if you join Sense, you could spend more time with your family, I'd be like, and I'm out. <laughs> No, thanks. I love my family. I don't need to spend more time with them. We're good. Um, but all my friends are S people. All my friends pretty much are S people. I have a couple D's as well. I have a couple C's now too. But the I's, I'm also, my, that's my second highest number. It's very influential and excited. It's like the cheerleader in school that goes, hi, oh my God, we have a game today. Those are I people. Um, you talk to I people about prizes and charms and that's the other thing. I love my charms. I know you got, uh, Rachel's seen my charms. Um, I love them. They make me happy. Um, so I have that other part of that as well. Um, but S's, S's are the ones that when you're sick, they bring you soup and they always think about you and they probably knit you a blanket and they'll go pick up your kids from school because you're sick and they will, you know, cook a freaking meal, a week's worth of food for you because you're volunteering somewhere else because you said yes and now you're stressed out because you said yes to this and you said yes to this and you said yes to this because you didn't want anybody to think that you were mean or something negative negative about you. <laughs> Stop saying yes to crap you really don't want to do. And you know what else? You don't have to give them the reason. You don't have to give them a reason. No, I always tell my team, are you coming to team day or not? I don't need to know why not. Sorry, I have to work. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I just need a head count. I just need to know how many people are coming. I don't care why you're not coming. You don't have to, you don't owe me an explanation. You're just not coming. I don't care. <laughs> like I care, but you know what I'm saying? Like everybody feels that they need to explain everything. And oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I just have to. Blah, 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 blah. I already stopped listening after. No, I can't. I don't care. You do you lady. You do you. Um, I remember working at a doctor's office and <laughs> I would take people go, hi, I need to change my appointment because. And they would give me this long story. Like they were in a Catholic confessional. <laughs> I'm like, and when would that work for you? I'd cut them off in the, like later when I saw the pattern, I'm like, oh my God, I don't care that your kid is sick. I don't, I don't care that you had a flat tire. I mean, I care. Do you know what I'm saying? But I, I don't, you're just taking up my time now. I hope everything goes well. I hope he feels better. What day? Um, so Please stop thinking you owe everybody an explanation. Okay. Um, also, when people give you a compliment, say thank you and don't say but. Just say thank you. You look, oh, I love your shoes. Those are really pretty. Great. You know, I only, oh, these, these old things. Oh, you look really nice today. Oh, thanks. I really need to get my hair cut. Stop it. Stop it. Just say thank you. It takes practice because I used to be that person. It takes a lot of practice. But every time now you're going to think of me sitting on your shoulder, the little pink haired, you go get a Capri doll. And that I want a Capri buddy clip actually for this reason. Um, and stop it. Just say thank you. And give them a compliment. Just say thank you. No buts. No excuses. Know how much you paid for it. Know that it was on sale. Know this old thing. Oh no, I don't look very good. To, nothing. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Um, people pleasing. And then the other one is being offended. Are you afraid to do things because you might offend somebody? Now, yes, you can be offensive. Absolutely. You can be off the wall, horrible, horrific, nasty, offensive person. Totally. But that isn't really who you are. At least I don't think so. Stop thinking you're going to... I I can offend people. <laughs> I have that personality. I've always had that personality. Um, because I am who I am. 
I'm confident who I am and I don't care what they think, but I don't be, I'm not disrespectful about it or nasty about it. I'm just sure of myself. And that makes people uncomfortable when they are insecure within themselves. Some people, they're like, I wish I could be more like you. Well, you can. <laughs> and some people think that I am this, that, or the other thing because I just said what I said. And if if I tell somebody, no, I don't really like her. Um, she's always got, she's just kind of negative. And she comes to me and says, did you say I was negative? I'd be like, yeah, I did, because you are. Then she would be offended. <laughs> Being offended is a choice. Being offended is a choice. It's a choice that they make. It means that they are insecure within themselves to take what you said and make it about them. When you were just answering a question, when you were just being speaking your truth, when somebody asked me a question and I know it's iffy if they're going to want to hear the real answer that I have, I'll be like, are you sure you want to know my answer? Yes. All right. No, you shouldn't do that with your hair because this, and I'll give them the reasons. Um, you, you cannot go around worrying about who you're going to offend. Ricky Gervais in the Netflix humanity, that is me. That everything, it will be on my next dating profile. If you watch hum humanity and you nod all the way through, we have a chance. <laughs> it is... Be kind, obviously. Be kind, be generous, be authentic, be, be grateful, be the best you that you can be. And that is your confidence. And that is how you know you're coming from a good place. I always speak from my heart. I, I'm an empath as well. So, But I've learned about my boundaries and what I choose to take in and what I choose to walk away from. But... If somebody's offended, that's their issue. I'm sorry. That is how you need to look at something within yourself. And one of the old sayings, which I kind of t believe and I kind of don't, it, it, it still hasn't completely rang true 100%, was whatever you don't like in somebody else is what you don't like within yourself. And I'm like, mm, it's true, but... I am not that person anymore, but I think I used to be. So I'm like, yeah, no, we don't, we don't want that anymore. Uh, oh, fucking zip lining. Do you know I was in such a haze zip lining? I remember hating it. I remember being bored. I remember your cigarette now. I don't remember a lot from that trip because it was right after Earl died. And I still, that the whole January, it was like just a, oof, a haze because his funeral was my parties were I got my orders in and then I got on a plane to go to Mexico um, and I think I finally really started grieving and letting it all out once I was with my cousin in Mexico in Pachuca so um, and I was by myself in my apartment in Pachuca just kind of and then it finally all came but I was still <laughs> working my um my discontinued list, what else was happening in, or the bring back my bar, or there was something that was happening because I was, I, I had printed out all the reports I needed and I took them along because I knew I'd have time in Mexico to do them. Oh, <laughs> one of the things I told Earl, I said, don't you fuck up my trip. <laughs> and he's, I said, if you die while I'm in Mexico, they're going to have to put you on ice. And it was this joke we had. So when he died on the 22nd of December, I was like, fair enough. You've just killed Christmas, but I'm not a big Christmas person. So yes, it's double host this month. I usually have about six parties after I get back from, because usually the first couple of weeks of January, I'm away on a Sensi trip for leadership or whatever we're doing. So the second half of the month, I usually have to make sure I have my month booked. I have my month booked in January by the beginning of December because this country shuts down for a month. Everybody goes on vacation, nobody's around, all the school kids are on holiday, it's summer here, everybody goes camping and travels and it's hard to get anybody to buckle down and do anything. So I've always made sure that my January is booked before Christmas, so. Um, but yeah, he didn't screw up my trip. It was a, it was a haze, it was a haze, total. I remember certain things about it. 
Um, and I remember all the love. I really remember all the love. It took me four hours to walk from one side of the reception desk to the other side because of all the love and the hugs and the people and the, instead of going, Patty, everyone's like, Patty. <laughs> so, but it was all love. It was all love. Um, I will tell you, I know I'm really over now. Um, and I've only talked about faux what I didn't talk about the other things. I can come back and talk about the other things. Um, being an immigrant in another country, I thought I was only here for Earl, which technically I was only here for Earl. And um, I thought when he died that I would be alone. Now, I don't care about being alone, but feeling I'm never lonely. But if, because I'm an only child and stuff, I'm, I'm, it's fine. I like being alone, but I'm never lonely, but I would feel alone in this country all by myself. And I have never felt more support, more love, more friendship, more family, more, I have never felt as connected and loved as I do now and I did when he died I was like oh my god I'm not alone now all these people you people you've been here the whole time but I didn't see it not the way I felt it the way it happened after he died blew my mind so grateful so grateful um, and that is something that Sensi can add to your life if you get out of your own freaking way. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. It's amazing. Um, I'm Sensi for life, for sure. Okay, so I only kind of covered about faux what and fear of what others think. Um, I know Rachel wanted me to go over branding as well. Um, I did... It, it, it's so much more. It, and I tell people that at parties I'm like I know you see this but there's so much you don't see that is way more valuable and amazing than what's on this table I said and that's what I wish for everybody so um, I do have a branding video um, that I can put the link into. So I talk about branding. Um, so I'll do that, um, in this group. And then I have two sheets that, um, cause Rachel wanted me to talk about my 90 day. It's not mine. It's Christina Stainbrook's 90 day slay sheet. Um, but I also had this one. It's called, um, a goal not written is only a wish daily action sheet to change your business. So I have that one and that one. There's also a power hour one in workstation, but I don't like that one. I like certain aspects of it, but I don't like that one. Um, so um, I will, I can come back and do another video. Maybe I'll go off of this one and I'll come back on and then people can just watch the replay if you want so that this one isn't so long. Um, Ugh. Yeah, but this is getting long now. I'm like over an hour. That's that's long. But does anybody have any questions before I go? Now that I'm in your group, I'll just like pop in one day and go, hey, look what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I'll post the I'll post these in the group and then you can have a look at them and decide. Um, and then if you have questions, but I'll, and I'll tell you where I learned about them by the way, too. Oh, huh, okay. I can come back. Yep. Um, does anybody have any questions on FOWA? If you need help or you're really proud of yourself because you kicked FOWA in the face that day or that moment, and you want to message me and tell you so I can clap for you, feel free. Um, I know it's not easy. It's like a muscle. You have to train it and you have to work on it and you have to use it every day, every day. Um, but you can do it. And the day I stopped, I remember the day I stopped caring what people thought. I'll, I'll leave you with a story. Um, when I first moved to New Zealand, I had, I met another American and she's like, oh gosh, I cried for the first four and a half years I was here. 
Four and a half years of crying. What? Are you shitting me? Whatever, lady. Oh my God, it totally was. <laughs> totally was four and a half years for me too where I cried and it wasn't because I missed home it's because it's a very very different headspace um how they look at things different humor it was it's all very different they may speak English but Earl's like but they don't speak American I said true um and so um I did cry a lot and whenever Earl came home and I was watching uh, Legally Blonde, Will and Grace, or um, Finding Nemo, he knew I had a day. And to, that day was this fucking country. That if those words came in my mouth, he's, he came home and he saw that on the TV. And he was like, right, you've had a bad New Zealand day. Yes, I did. Because I did feel like Elle Woods when I, people don't wear, they didn't wear, they really don't wear makeup much. And they didn't, they dressed well, but their face was always empty and, um, they just didn't, they're not silly. They're very English and serious. And now I, once I became myself, I found all the fun people. <laughs> so that was good. Um, and, um, and then I got, um, just keep swimming with Dory tattooed on my arm. Um, to remind myself, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. Um, you can do this, you can do this, just keep going. And I remember I still had faux watt when I got this tattoo because she wanted to put it here. And I went, no, 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 no. I said, oh my gosh, if I get a job and I have to cover it with a shirt, I was still programmed American. American programming. No, 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 you can't show your tattoos. No, 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 I won't get the job. No, 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 I can't be myself. So I had her put it here so that I could still wear long sleeves and people wouldn't see it. And then I got it. And it's still in a place where I have to extend my arm so people see it because it's on the inside. But I learned quickly that I was going to get looked at. And I was going to get judged because I had a tattoo. Even here. Ta everybody has tattoos here now. But everybody's going to, you know. And I was like, and I remember that split second going, I don't care. And it was done and it happened just like that. I remember the day exactly and going, oh my God, I really don't care what people think. And I remember breathing. And after that, I became myself. And when I became myself, no more crying. I made friends. I found fun people. When you're trying to make yourself something that you're not, people know it's not authentic and it's not, it doesn't feel good to them either. Who is she trying to be? Oh no, she's trying too hard. Y'all know who I'm talking about. There's somebody that's trying too hard out there. Just be yourself. And real friends with real souls will deal, will figure out whether they can deal with your real self or they can't. But when you love yourself, you just go, great, it was nice knowing you. Obviously that was the end of our relationship in that part, but I wish you well and um, we'll have coffee later and you never do kind of thing. Um, but I remember that, totally remember that. And it's funny because every job I had, I said, do you mind if I show my tattoo? And they said, what is it? I've got them other places now too, but nothing perverted. Um, and I said, oh, it's Dory and Squirt. And they're like, oh no, it's not like skulls or anything. And I was like, okay, so we know no skull tattoos there. Um, but it was still happy. It was still something happy, so nobody cared. Um, I have Tinker Hell on my back. That one gets a couple comments when people can see it because she's got it's Tinker Bell, but she's got horns and a devil's tail because um, that's my Gemini ish ways of being my dual personalities. So, um, but yeah, so um, just be you, you're good at it when you know who you are on the inside it will show on the outside and people will be attracted your type of people the people that you love will be attracted to you based on the energy that you're giving out stop caring what people think free yourself free yourself all right i'm out because your team's like jesus this lady can talk have an amazing night i'll come back in a minute and talk for anybody that wants to stay up all right 
All right. Thank you, Rachel. Love you.